Hey Rongo, um, I figured I'd make it, uh, do this as my daily video this morning, uh, so, and for everybody else, a uh, quick bit of background on why I'm making this video, uh, one of the Discord groups I'm in is, uh, heavily writing heavy, and initially I joined merely to try and drum up proofreading business, but I do have an interest in writing as well, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have this channel where I review things on occasion. Uh, speaking of which, The Boys Season 7, up until that last episode, looked pretty good. It was uh, almost a parody of Woke, but looks like things have gone sideways. Uh, leaving that alone, uh, Rongo, who I'm actually addressing, he's in the group uh, on Discord that I'm speaking about. He made a point about uh, writing villains and um, how exactly did he put it? I want to make sure I get this quote right. So let me just bring up Discord on my phone before I spill coffee everywhere because my table is tippy. That I might as well get the ashtray in place too. Um, anyway, folks, uh, at the risk of boring the shit out of you while I leave you with dead air, um, kindly like, share, subscribe, comment. If you feel generous, there's a donation link. Mm. Now, originally, uh, what Rongo said was the Nietzschean worldview is essential for writing villains and fantasy heroes. I actually disagree, and uh, this video is going to serve as my response to that, because I'm too lazy to keep talking to my phone and hitting buttons or whatever, and this is just simpler, and I need content for my channel. Thanks, Rango. And the reason I disagree is because, and this may not have been the initial intended thrust of his comment, but the reason I disagree is because... If you're picking a, a particular worldview, uh, let me see if I can get comfortable here. I'm just getting up, I'm getting in the sheds. A um, little to the left, I think. There we are. Uh, so, my uh, perspective on this is that uh, picking a worldview to base a villain or a hero on should be one that can be inverted for either. Uh, so with Nietzsche, or Nietzsche, however you want to pronounce it, and I'm assuming he means uh, the German philosopher Nietzsche, not uh, Nietzschean as in the uh, species from Andromeda. Um, but, um, goodness, lost my thread for a second there. Anyway, yeah, I don't think that you should pick a worldview that can't be inverted and fit either heroes or villains. With Nietzsche, I don't think it can. Uh, I think the problem with Nietzsche's uh, view is that it's great for villains. It would be absolutely great for villains because it's all about uh, self-reliance and uh, discarding uh, some traditions. God is dead, things like that. Now, granted, I have a fairly surface-level understanding of Nietzsche, but uh, if I were to pick a villain uh, mindset, it wouldn't be self-reliance. It would be dominance, which is different. Um, I would pick someone like Heinlein, for example, just the regular pop culture knowledge of Heinlein's philosophies. An armed society is a polite society. Um, what else? Um, specialization is for insects, things like that. And if you invert that, the attitude of a villain in that Heinleinian line would be, uh, you know, uh, people should be forced to be dependent and people should be forced into specialization so they cannot 
envision going beyond their limits. Um, in a sense, the modern SJW is a Heinleinian villain. Uh, they are determined that the only authority that matters is what they want. Uh, they tend towards high authoritarianism while also claiming to hate the government. Uh, openly claiming to hate the government, privately not so much. They want to be the government. Um, they believe in doing things that they see as good while refusing to uh, admit to the existence of any possible flaw in their understanding of an issue. That's the inverted Heinleinian position. Uh, service guaranteeing citizenship is another line from Heinlein, uh, though the way it's portrayed in the Starship Troopers film is a little different than it is in the books. But, um, and there's also Heinlein's attitude towards women, or gender roles if you prefer, but first we'll focus on the service guarantee citizenship thing. Uh, excuse me. Um, from Heinlein's perspective, if you didn't have skin in the game, you should have no say. Excuse me. If you don't have skin in the game, you should have no say whatsoever in the outcome of the game. Uh, whereas modern SJWs, they want to open their countries up to everybody for no reason. They, they believe in open borders or no borders. Um, I see the sun's starting to come up. That's kind of affecting my lighting. Uh, that's a bit better, but then that's because I'm a pale son of a bitch. Uh, it definitely highlights the ginger. Uh, but with Nietzsche, uh, the idea that God is dead and we have killed him, uh, that sounds great for a villain. The problem is you can't invert that for a hero. If you invert that, you get God is alive and we have created him. It kind of sucks all the authority away from God. Now, I'm not a particularly God-fearing God person anyway. I'm an atheist. But uh, that doesn't really scream villain to me because it's still not admitting to any authority uh, beyond the individual and or any anything idealized beyond the individual and a hero someone like a knight in shining armor or uh, the soldier who sacrifices himself on the battlefield for his allies, for his, um, oh my, his fellow soldiers. Uh, they don't do that because there is no God, or because God is an artificial idea. They do that because they have an ideal that they uphold that is more than something they created, uh, or more than, it's something beyond themselves. So, that's why I think Nietzsche is a bad choice for uh, writing a villain, because there's no invertibility there. You can't have a protagonist and an antagonist who both follow the Nietzschean ideals with an inversion. Um, you can take Christian ideology and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Still recovering slightly from that flu. Um, but you can take the Christian ideology and invert it and get Satanism. And you can actually have a Satanic hero. Uh, and again, we start to lean into the, the um, SJWs there. So I think it's kind of interesting that uh, that people would choose Nietzschean ideology for a, a villain. And then again, perhaps your writing style works that way, but I find that, um, take the old Bond movies, 
you have a very heroic, patriotic soldier spy who change that angle a bit. There we go. It's a bit, it was a bit close. Um, but you have a patriotic soldier spy who uh, basically serves at the Queen's uh, whim or wish. Uh, who is loyal to his government. Uh, to invert that, you get someone like, I believe it was Blofeld, who was the head of Spectre. Uh, someone who believes that power should reside with him and his set of elites. Again, we're coming back to the SJW crowd, or at least more the, uh, the WEF, the World Economic Forum, uh, Party of Davos sort of uh, clique. Uh, and I think Party of Davos is a lovely uh, name for a villainous group. But that's my take on the issue. Anyway, uh, it's 11 minutes, so this will serve as my daily video this morning. And it'll also serve as a response to Rondo. So I hope that was uh, thorough enough. And any other, any comments or questions you want to make to me, Rongo, uh, this will be posted in the Discord as a response. Uh, anyone who wants to like, share, comment, subscribe, there's a donation link. I'd absolutely appreciate that as well. Okay, thank you all. Have a good day. Bye. Ah, uh, wait. Talk to you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye.